In the spirit of the open philosophy, we decided early on that we wanted our kids to be engineers and inventors and not technology tourists. And here's where we broke from tradition. During our class meetings, we spoke with all of our high school students about the program. We brought them together and we started that conversation with the words, we trust you. What we didn't want to lose sight of was the fact that any one-to-one -one program, when you're, when you're giving every child a computing device, that is fundamentally an instructional program. It truly shouldn't have anything to do with the technology. Right? Not that the technology isn't important, but it's the learning that is the focus. We've always been looking at it from the standpoint of we have to educate students for life after high school. And with technology being such an important factor in just about every job that the student's going to go into, it wasn't a matter of should we do it, it was more of when do we provide the students with a laptop. When you give students a chance to explore, you're teaching them to be responsible. And in their future, hopefully in their careers, they will have learned in my class and in their other classes how to be responsible users of technology. It's not going anywhere. So why would we ever consider giving a 16-year-old root access to a laptop? I think the question we should be asking is why would we not give students ultimate autonomy and control over their technology devices? I think by unlocking devices and giving kids truly open technology, it empowers them to not only understand what's underneath the hood, but understand that they can impact the world through software, through technology. They can be part of the decisions that are being made and not the result or the end user of someone else's decision. Just for frame of reference, one-to-one -one help desk models are not unique. Um, this, this model of having student apprentices is, is, I shouldn't say common, but it's not uncommon, right? The level we give our kids is, is uncommon, right? I think that's the differentiator. There, there is a cost associated with allowing a 16-year-old to completely dismantle a laptop. They could cook boards, they could fry things, the whole works could come out as a complete mess. And sometimes it does. But the power in that is that the student learned, wow, I cooked that board, now I know how not to do that. Or I learned, that's what I shouldn't be doing. Right, the power is in the experience. I think it's a beautiful thing that the students are there behind the help desk because that flattens that, well, it's just an adult telling us what to do. Since we've gotten the laptops in school, it feels like the teachers and students are a lot more connected. It was a new experience collaborating with the student on teaching and not just the teacher teaches the student, but that he felt valuable in the class as well. There is no distinction, there's no distinction between the teacher and the student. Everyone is on equal footing and the best ideas win. How can that not make sense for education? For me to say this is how you do things, that would completely destroy any type of collaboration. My students, a lot of what they do is collaborative. I don't think that they learn the best from me. That's where I think it ties into not only the open source and the mentality of, of sharing and making it better, but then in addition to preparing them for those jobs that we don't know. I know, I think we missed something, again, just babbling here, just, just kind of a few ideas and, and thoughts, but I think we lost something when education became so rigid and formalized and we moved away from the apprenticeship model. The curriculum itself, we don't write, we couldn't write a curriculum for this, no matter what we did, because the problems are different every single day. And, and not only the problems different, they're different across multiple disciplines and subjects. So our students are going to be faced with, how do I solve X application problem that applies to science, and then turn around and say, well, this might be a network issue, or maybe it's a hardware issue, and now I'm working on a program that is germane to art. How do you write a curriculum about that? We do repairs, we do software, we help any way we can, but just being here just makes me you know, happy. I think the help desk has really helped sort of introduce me to a work environment as a team. The program to me is just kind of an escape for myself. I'm not really assessed on whether or not I can memorize things for like a test. It's more of applying myself 
and you know, accomplishing goals. It's not the normal classroom. It's completely different. This is one of those defining moments in, in my entire career. And just working with the, the initial group of students that were part of our one-to-one our -one help desk. Um, here's an example. Um, Ben, uh, ben is one of four core students that formed really the nucleus of the initial one-to-one -one help desk. My name is Benjamin Luan Thomas. I graduated in the 2014 year. He was a kid that didn't really like school. Um, we would go into parent-teacher conferences and feel deflated at the end of them because they just didn't see Ben for what we saw at home. Or in my freshman year, I didn't really have too much of a focus. I was kind of just like, all right, I got to wake up, go to school. Um, he had got an IEP, I think, in second grade mm -hmm. um, for a learning disability. And then later, he was diagnosed with ADD. I remember sitting in a, an IEP conference with a guidance counselor in ninth grade for Ben and her saying that, you know, Ben's not going to be going to college and we shouldn't plan on that. We shouldn't... Um, focus on that and that really was hard. Um, so your sophomore year you created the application? Sophomore year we created the application. Junior year we did the um, showcase and then that's summer is when we started working on the applications that we would use at the student help desk. We kind of set up the building blocks that most of the students today follow. That the end of that year um, we were at an IEP meeting with him and they were helping him plan out his next year classes and all of a sudden they wanted him to be in college placement classes. My college professors definitely see that I'm a little bit ahead of the curve. The other students hadn't really had too much coding experience. They weren't really exposed to open source. I mean, this was just an opportunity for him to showcase his talents. He didn't have that opportunity before. I would not be where I am today without the one-to-one -one program. But it was just, it was just remarkable of how, how it changes the conversation when you say to a student, you know something, you're an important part of your own education. It's freeing, it's empowering, right? It makes them feel, I think for the first time they feel that education is not being done to them. They're actually an active participant in their own education. And I think that's the power of trusting kids.